Hello everyone, my name is Agustin, I'm the CEO and co-founder of UbiDots. Uh, today I, with my colleague David, lead of customer success, and we'll be explaining how to integrate the thing stack with UbiDots. Now, as a quick refresher, UbiDots is an IoT development platform. It means that we give you all the tools to go to or to take the prototype that you have in your drawer and take it all the way to a business. To do this, we give you all the backend and front-end ingredients, such as data ingestion with IoT-friendly APIs, uh, a lot of different tools to do analytics, data transformation, uh, an events engine to be able to alert or send alerts based on the different logic of your data. Of course, a safe place to store your data and retrieve it, be it through a front-end or an API, and a visualization so that you can make sense of all the data that you're gathering. So at the end, our customers take all of these components and do uh, or are able to deploy a completely white label application that they, their end clients will perceive as a, complete, a, a completely owned IoT platform, but on behalf of our customers. So uh, you might be familiar with UbiDots because of our STEM version. Uh, it's no coincidence, we have to date over 100,000 developers that have used our tools to deploy some sort of IoT project. Uh, and the range is pretty large, really. Yeah, we, we have served from makers, students, researchers, uh, fifth grade students creating wildfire detection devices, uh, such as this lady using Raspberry Pis and Legos. And the range is, is pretty broad. Uh, so we have also IoT entrepreneurs like this use case, uh, a Latin American based entrepreneur who designed this smart weight for chickens and is selling it to farmers across the whole globe. Uh, system integrators that are in turn serving end customers in a sort of more industrial IoT application, such as oil and gas, mining, you name it. And then, of course, the enterprise, uh, some companies that have started to set up internal teams of IoT and bring their IoT data to a centralized platform. If you ask me, our sort of our, our sweet spot is right in the middle. So IoT and system integrators, IoT entrepreneurs and system integrators make up most of our client base. So if you are wondering about your next IoT endeavor or how to turn a complete uh, or, or an existing business model, how to turn it into a recurring uh, business model, then uh, Ubidots might be a good place to start. Uh, so let's talk about TTS. So uh, for those of you who might have heard our talk uh, earlier this year, you will know that uh, we were suggesting, and it is still uh, supported by the way, uh, th that you would send data from your lower one devices uh, and then create a webhook and the things stack which would be received at UbiDots using Ubi Functions. Now, Ubi Functions uh, is great. It, it's a design, it's a whole serverless environment designed for you to call your own functions using Python and or, or Node.js. And because of that sort of more industrial uh, angle, it's uh, only supported in our professional license. And also, it's uh, it's very powerful, so it also means it's very generic. It can be used for a lot of different things. So while powerful, we thought, hey, why not coming up with a simpler way to also integrate the things stack for those of you who might be looking for speed and not only the power of Ubi functions. So that's how we come came up with the, the TTS plugin. Uh, basically, it's the same logic. The, the only difference is now, uh, as David will be showing us in a minute, uh, you will create a, a plugin on UbiDots site. Uh, the, the, bright, the benefits of this is A, well, we're making it available to uh, all UbiDots STEM users. So the students, researchers, and makers like yourselves uh, can also tinker with the, with the platform and the integration. And it's a purpose-built decoder, meaning that we're already taking all that metadata that's being received from the TTS 
and mapping it to UbiDocs devices. So uh, very quick, here's the data that you would typically use using Ubi functions, which is you would take uh, the binary, binary payload and a unique identifier such as the dev EUI, and then use it into um, an UbiDocs device, maybe to give it a name, a unique identifier, uh, but as you can see visually, there's a lot of data that was being left out. So with this new integration, we worked on a, a predefined code so that you can make use of that metadata. We're uh, creating without variables for, for example, SNR uh, values, RSSI, frame counters. Imagine an application where you're wondering whether you lost the packet or not and tracking the frame counter will allow you to keep the historical trace of, of the frames that you're receiving. Uh, so it's a, a more, it's a richer way to, to play UbiDOS and TTS together. So without further ado, I'll give it to my colleague David for a live demo. Thank you all, bye-bye. Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you are enjoying this new uh, version of the, the Things Stack conference. Uh, today, as Agustin said, we will be going through the integration be between this LoRaWAN network server and UbiDots. As Agustin also mentioned, uh, we've been working on this integration quite a lot uh, to make it easier. And it's just simply evolving every time uh, that we come here to explain it. Uh, with no further ado, let's go over it. I'm right now on the data plugin section. That is that that is the module we are going to use for it. Uh, you can find it on the, the devices dropdown, and then clicking on the plugins. Creating one is very easy. You can click on the plus button and then find the respective option, the thing stack. Clicking on it and then going to the next step. I'm going to skip this explanation. This is just a readme that goes over uh, how to configure this plugin, but but I'm going to skip it. In the next step, uh, you're you are prompt to enter two things, uh, a device type label. If you have already one created, you can enter the label here or simply leave the, uh, the plugin to create the default one, which is TTS-devices. And the last thing we need to select a token. In this case, I already created one called TTS plugin token. The next step prompt us to enter a name. I'm going to call it the thing stack test and a description. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, at the end, we will only need to, to check this green check mark and wait for UbiDots to deploy our plugin in the back end. You can see it here on the end. I'm going to click it. And as this workflow involves setting things on UbiDots and TTN, the only thing I need right now from my decoder is the HTTPS endpoint URL. I'm going to copy it and head over to TTS. Right now, I need to select my application, of course. So it would be UbiDots Playground. And, on, and in, the, in the left panel, you will find the integrations and then webhooks. There are several options just to send different webhooks to uh, other upstream platforms, and you can see UbiDots is one of them. Today, we are going to use custom webhooks um, while we actually update the native uh, integration here to match this new plugin workflow. So let's click on webhooks, and creating one is very easy. We just need to input a webhook ID. In this case, it's going to be ubi.test, select the format, it's going to be JSON. And in the URL, we're going to paste our plugin uh, endpoint URL. Uh, as it asks us only for the base URL, I'm going to cut all the path like this and just leave data plugin that ubidots.com. I'm going to add a header, an authentication header for those who are familiar with it. And for those who don't, this is the header X out token that we use to authenticate our API. I have already a token in my clipboard somewhere around here. Oh, I'm sorry. It isn't this one. It's going to be this one. 
Yeah, exactly. And at the end, uh, we just need to uh, enable the type of messages that are going to be handled by this webhook. In this case, we are only using uplink messages. It prompts us to enter a path to the webhook, and this is exactly what we caught before. This is the, these are the only options we need to enter here. So let's just click on Add Webhook. And once we do that, all the data coming to this application is going to be forwarded to our plugin. In this case, in this example we are right now, we are using a WISBlock device. I have mine right now. It's quite a piece. It's, it, it has a very little uh, environmental sensor measuring temperature, humidity, um, quality index, and uh, pressure, right? So every 20 seconds, we are receiving this data from this device, coming through TTS, going to the webhook that we are going to see right now, and then to UbiDots. With this being clear, let's just go to data plugins and just to show you how this works. You'll see that uh, below the decoder settings, you'll find decoding function. This is a Node.js function that allows us to receive the data from TTS, which is the native JSON uh, full of information on metadata that Augustine showed us before, and take it and parse it into a new Windows compatible one. Here we, take, we are taking uh, valuable information for, from, from the gateway that forwarded the packet, um, and we will see it on the device in a minute. But most importantly, we are using a decoding function for this particular device, uh, using bitwise operations to just uh, take the data coming from TTS and make it a new Windows compatible JSON. Once we're ready with that, we only need to save and make it live, right? So, as a, as a recap, we are sending data from the WISP block uh, to the TTS LoRaWAN network server to our plugin that decodes the data and then at the end send it back to UbiDots, right? So, let's see how this works and how this looks on UbiDots. I already have my device here. It's called WISBlock environment. And basically what we have here are several variables that I already told you. Pressure, humidity, temperature, gas, and some metadata like the F port and the frame counter. As I was mentioned, this would be a good variable to track your data frames and counting them. Also, we have two orange variables, which are the SNR and ROSSI from our gateway in our headquarters, just to report how the signal is in our office. Uh, beyond this, well, basically, I took like six minutes to explain how to integrate UbiDots. Um, I hope you enjoyed this quick overview about the plugins. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at ubidots at ubidots.com. I'm sorry, support at ubidots.com. Or maybe just put a post in our community in ubidots.com slash community. We will be happy to help you and looking forward to see what you build with ubidots. Bye-bye.